Hello friends, this is Dr. Aman. Welcome to UK Dreamers. Today we'll be talking about how to apply for the ST1 or CT1 training posts. Uh, so as you are aware that the season for applying these applications is just coming, so I thought it would be a good thing to make a video about this so that you guys can prepare and make your applications better and the selection chance become better. So uh, before I proceed, I would like to make the statement that I do not represent the NHS, nor the deaneries, nor the trusts, nor any of the legal bodies. This video is just for, you know, guys and girls like you and me who want to come to the UK, train in the UK, how to apply for these training posts and just to give you an overview about these. So first of all, let's start. What is a training post? So. Uh, training post is basically a structured program sort of thing. Like you, many countries, we call it as residency. Here in the UK, they call it as a training post. So it includes the service provision plus teaching activities and supported structure overall. So for me, for instance, I'm, I'm currently working as a non-training post, as a trust grade post, and I'm moving into a training post. So... Uh, you know, the big benefit of training post, as I said, it's well supported, well organized. You end up getting a CCT, which is valid in most of parts of the world. And it's also essential criteria for you to be a consultant in the UK as well. So before we go further, there's a very, very common term that pops up called CT and ST. So people get confused over what's a CT or what's a ST. So there are a few programs which are run through. So as in you would enter as ST1, specialty training one, and you would get off as a CCT. For instance, emergency medicine, the ACCS emergency medicine program, I've made a video about it, you can have a look. Uh, so in those programs, you enter as ST1 and you exit as ST6. So the six years program, you need not reapply for any sort of training and you start at one point at end at one point. These sort of trainings are called ST trainings. Other examples, as I said, peers, histopathology, gynae ops and all. The other ones are called core training, that is CT. So these would be like, they would initially train you for the basic, uh, you know, requirement of the specialty for two to three years, mostly three years now. And then you would have to reapply for higher specialty training in those specialties. Uh, most common, like for instance, internal medicine training, it was used to call as core training. It used to be two years. Now it is three years, apparently. Uh, so IMT is basically a core training. After the core training, you have to either apply for the specialty uh, training level three or four, depending on which group specialties you're wanting. Same goes with psychiatry, same goes with surgical branches, same goes with anesthetics. So you come as a core trainee, you apply for higher specialty and then you become a specialty trainee. Okay, so uh, more or less both are same. Yes, they slight, you know, struggle again with the core trainees, uh, like the, uh, as I said, the medicine, surgery and everything. But if you get into a run through training, you know, you end at one, you start at one point and end at one point. So what's the eligibility criteria for one to apply for these training posts? You must be eligible for a full license uh, license registration in the UK. That is, you must possess GMC. Like for, uh, I get many queries like, I have applied my GMC. I'm still awaiting. Can I ap apply for the training? Yes, you can. The main criteria still remains the same, that you must have your GMC before you've actually entered the specialty training. But people, uh, you know, I, I would encourage you to just clear your PLAB one and before you write your PLAB to, to do this, it's not recommended at all. So please finish your exams first. Please get a GMC. I would rather support for you to come to the UK and work first. Get, to use, uh, get used to the culture here. Get used to the working pattern, the working system here. Like uh, now what, what uh, you know, the specialty trainings they are doing, like uh, you can sit the MSRA exam at your country and you can directly come to the UK 
uh, start working as a specialty training like most of the gps are doing this but i would this is my personal recommendation i would definitely ask you guys if you were coming to this country please get accustomed first before entering to specialty training uh, trust grade would give you a great opportunity to learn adapt you know uh, and modify the thinking process that you you've been working for so long but yeah if you directly want to come to training no not recommended from my end definitely uh so if you there are further three categories for the eligibility if you have done your foundation years in the uk great you are eligible if you've not most of us foreign graduates would need a form which is called crest form which is basically the certificate of readiness to enter specialty training i will discuss about this in the coming slides so uh and there's one final thing that you should be eligible to work in the uk as in you know there shouldn't be any visa conflicts with the country that you're coming from basically so what you can see on the screen is the 2021 crest form uh as of now this year also they are still accepting the 2021 crest form in 20, like for applications which would begin in 2002 and the placements that will begin in 2023 so uh as you can see there's a brief example of things that you get need to get filled so it's a very very extensive form i would give you the link in the description session uh, you know area so that you can have a look at it but it basically deals with the day to day things that you should know and you you need to come and do here in the uk so for instance if you say of personal responsibility takes personal responsibility for clinical decisions able to justify accepts responsibility errors or takes suitable action and all and all so who is going to sign this of course a consultant in the uk who's on the specialist register so if he's witnessed he would write it on the green one if he hasn't he would write evidence received how do you get these evidences so it's not compulsory for you to get a crest form signed from one single consultant parts of this you can get from someone parts of this from someone and at the end it should all compile and everything should be on the green ones if there is any red arrow or red box which has been ticked the crest form would be getting denied so as you can see unable to confirm on the extreme right if you got any of those it gets denied make sure you get your competency as well so as i said it's a extensive form you need to have a look at it you need to you know be in agreement with the supervisor your consultant uh, yes now what's happening is uh, people can get it signed overseas so i'm coming to that now who can sign your crest form so crest form must be signed by a consultant who with whom you worked at least for 3 months in the past 3.5 years that's very fairly simple and you must be able to demonstrate uh, that they are uh, oh sorry this is for the person signing the crest form that they should be on the special register if they are not if you're getting it signed from a consultant overseas you would also have to submit their uh you know certificate of registration like for instance if you're applying from a consultant who's working in india you would have to get the medical council of registration india or the state council registration for that consultant along with this application which when you, when you will send it to the higher specialty training so uh as you can see there's a big list of uh, you know people who can actually sign but they can't be acting as your signatory okay so the best thing as you say you know would be better to get it signed from a consultant okay uh and make sure you know like try to get it sorted from your supervisors they are usually very helpful with this if not try to get sorted with two two three consultants max and you know compile all the data so that you get your crest form well so what is the checklist for you before you get your crest form signed basically so your preparation to get your crest form ready so prior to submission and everything there these are few sections that you can see on the screen that you know you've never complete not satisfactory completed the foundation year program so most of us you know it won't be uh, applicable but yes if you're doing your foundation years make sure you've done it well you've completed the declaration section in the crest form because whatever you declaring you taking a oath that it's all good it's all valid if you're not you may be barred from getting into the training post 
uh, your signatory is a consultant or equivalent uh, you worked with this person at least for 3 months in the past 3.5 years and you know if if you are filling all these criteria then only think about getting a crest form crest form itself is a big target but before getting in the crest form this is what you should be ready with and you know uh, as i said crest form extensive form and uh, they you know once you go through it it would be a more more better for you to you know get all these details basically so let's begin about the round 1 specialty recruitment how do you proceed what all do you need and what should be approximate timeline that you'll be looking at it so as i said if you are applying for a core trainee or a specialty trainee one level uh, you would need all these uh, things to be getting placed in order so uh, i'm not going to talk about round 2 uh specialty recruitment because it it would be starting now in july you would have your msra exams in september uh, august i think and by september you need to join and all but you know uh, let's talk only about round 1 in this video so uh, this is a uh, for instance this is a uh, plan from 2020 2021 so the advertisement would go off in november so november is the most important month for you the advertisement will usually go on second third november after you've got the applications open the window on oriel would open on 5th like for instance the first week of uh, november and it'll close on you know the very beginning of december i will give you a brief overview what is oriel in the coming slides please please stay tuned so once you've submitted everything oriel has scanned everything up then you would be long listed for the short you know then interviews short listed and then you would be given an offer basically so this is what it's saying as you can see on the screen this is the oriel website okay so you need to make a oriel website account it's free of charge doesn't have to be any money on it so as you can see on the left hand side the medical specialty recruitment application handbook it's a very very great resourceful book please have a look over it before you apply for specialty training and once you come if you can see on the bottom it says the crest yeah so uh, as i am talking to you there is a very very decent plan from the he itself so the application form for the crest how is the crest form looking what's the checklist what what else and all you know do you need so once you've submitted your crest form you made your oriel website oriel account you need to supply all the documents and evidences that you got on this website so this website would be the single point of contact for you to apply for the specialty training you need not apply individually or expect individual answers from the royal colleges or the deaneries or the specialties that you are applying this would be a single point contact so once you have applied like the posts open you apply you made the oriel you know account you got your crest form signed and you have applied everything up many of the specialties would need you to give the msra exam which is the multi specialty recruitment assessment so this exam would further decide whether you would get into training not get into training so uh, i've made a video uh, about msra test uh, i'll upload the link above but what uh, specialties would need this and then you, you know you should be planning way ahead of actually writing this exam so if you're planning for emergency medicine accs uh you are applying for anesthetics you are applying for clinical radiology you are applying for community sexual health core psychiatry general practice neurosurgery ops gynae ophthalmology mostly i think i've covered all if i missed any i'm really sorry so these were the ones who would need the msra of course if you are applying for imt internal medicine training core surgical training pediatrics these won't need the msra this would have their own self assessment as i you can see in front of me and if you score well on the self assessment form then you would be offered a interview and then if you clear the interview you would be offered a training post so every specialty would have their own stuff okay own way of arranging things own way of asking you for call you know 
evidences and everything so usually what happens is if you go and open the self assessment i would make individual videos about medicine surgery radiology these these are the ones that i could make uh, in the next sessions so you would be given a form for instance have you done teaching have you done any research have you done any publications uh, do you have any masters degree and what not if you have all these then you say yes and then you need to uh, you know supply them with the evidences for that so this is what overall self assessment is so uh, applicants unhappy with the score can request a review this is a good thing but you know no new evidence can be submitted so make sure you've submitted all you know you've taken all how all the artillery that you've got not not left any you know options for later on basically so let's talk individually about few of the specialties and how how msra works for them and how overall things work so the source for this as i said if you go to the specialty training website of he you can find all these so let's talk about accs emergency medicine so as i said this is a run through training so you get short listed if you score a certain level in the msra i think this year it was about 480 or something so after you've scored good in the msra be you know you will be filtered out basically so uh, once you've shortlisted they would call you for an interview interview yes you would have the interview you will have the clinical scenarios ethical scenarios your commitment to the specialty how's your portfolio looking like what's your future plan like have you written any exams and all and all so applicants would be ranked according to the overall assessment score and this would comprise of the msra and the interview scores so msra alone will not get you emergency medicine you have to give the interview and the msr if you talk about core anesthetics or accs anesthetics uh, as i said this is a core training post so the same thing msr online interview ranking according to the interview scores and msr if uh, if anyone is applying for oro maxilla facial surgery uh, they've actually got their own shortlisting by self assessment and then they would have a interview online and you know you will get offered posts cardiothoracic surgery everyone wants to do this very very highly competitive i'll talk about the competition scores in the end so uh, usually you know they've got their own assessment form okay once you fill those assessment forms uh, it's a very extensive form you know asking about all the researches and what not so once everything's done and you've been shortlisted again you know you would be given a 30 minute uh, interview uh and as i said each interview will have five assessors so basically you know you get thoroughly evaluated and then your overall selection is based on your interviews and the shortlisting scores radiology yet another favorite one yet highly competitive so msra shortlisting they would also give you a form like uh, before applying for the msra it would also give you a self assessment form which you need to fill and then only you can write the msra and after that is done you get a single interview station of 15 minutes then the final score is the msra your self assessment and the interview all pooled up together and then you get up the score uh if we talk about community sexual reproductive medicine very few seats uh, but still competitive the same msra interviews combined score if you talk about psychiatry only msra so if you're scoring high on the psychiatry or uh, msra you can directly take the psychiatry and surpass the interviews at the moment let's talk about surgery most of you highly competitive branches in surgery so surgery would usually give the self verification assessment okay you need to say you've done this you've done that like uh, what i am aware is surgery would definitely ask you if you've done additional courses with the royal college of surgeons whether you've done the taster sessions how many have you operated how many have you assisted have you been to the ot and what not so their mindset would be mostly surgical oriented so uh, your self verification would uh, contribute 33% of your selection score shortlisted applicants would be given uh, online interviews and then you would be given the interview score the self assessment score and you know overall selection would be depending on these i would try to make a separate video on this general practice score high in msra get the place as simple as that 
histopathology the same short listing on the self assessment and interviews and then both of them combine and give you a slot internal medicine training yes similar you get the self assessment form okay fill that self assessment form then you get if you get short listed you would be given a interview slot interview slot would be about 20 25 minutes uh, which would be clinical scenario ethical scenario specialty commitment and what do you do outside medicine basically and as per the interview scores you would be given the rankings and the offers neurosurgery uh, these are very very less in number yet competitive but for this you need the msra cardiothoracic surgery didn't need that but for this you need the msra and you would get long listed short listed interviews and hence and so forth okay obstetrics gynecology so you would need msra for getting short listed on this as well msra would be using the 25% of the overall score rest would be definitely you know getting to the interviews and all so as you can say interview for those that pass the msra but do not reach the bypass score assessment will be based on msra score and an on- online interview ophthalmology i've already made a video about this you can have a look guys so msra high score in the msra and then portfolios which is very important here msra score online interviews and this is how you get into the ophthalmology training pediatrics pediatrics have their own assessment form uh, there's a digital interview of about 30 minutes and then you know uh, there's a white space application questions yes and the online online interviews and these would be pulled up together if you score good yes you'd be offered a position public health medicine uh, as i said you know there is a numerical reasoning critical thinking exam for this uh, it's similar to the msra where you said the msra and all so once you've sorted this another online interview and then you get into it so on the screen you can see the competition ratio this is not this year's i think this is last year's so as you can see emergency medicine yes about four so one seat four people are competing basically and this is after you've been shortlisted and everything anesthetics everything if you see cardiothoracic surgery highly competitive community sexual reproductive health is highly competitive neurosurgery is highly competitive but if you see any other you know the, the, it's not easy so the whole point of making this video is if you think you're doing well but there are people who have done better than you so how to make you better if we talk about the filling ratios so as you can see uh, the seats uh, the posts and the acceptance other than general practice i think everyone was within 100 general practice went above the 100 person and took a few more people and so as you can see guys there's not much of seats left so whatever posts are offered are usually being taken so you scored high in the msra you got shortlisted now it's interview time i highly recommend this book guys i have always recommended this even i read from this book uh, my colleague dr jinad told me about this uh, so you know read through and through man like this is one of the excellent books it will teach you all the basics that you should be expecting in the interviews including the ethical scenarios and what not so make sure you start reading this book in well in time not 5 days before your interview the same goes with msra if you think you know it's a very very easy exam you will just read a one month or something and then get into it no friends it's a hard exam in the sense it's tricky at least give it 4 to 5 months preferably 6 months you know it, it won't give you any harm to 20 questions a day from past medicine or e medica or any of the question banks you know you will get through it so what my take home points for all the aspirants who want to get into training posts the reason i'm telling you these guys because you know i made a few of videos about myself changing the specialty getting into training posts uh when i came to the uk uh, in november 2020 i was same lost 
because you 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 expect that you go to a new system and it would be very very easy and everything it's a different world guys and plus when you come here you you get on to the pressure that everyone wants you to proceed everyone wants you to get succeeded in the form that you get into a training post that adds a lot of pressure on to you so my take home points for all you guys is start preparing early like for instance this is july and you think oh november is very far i'll do things to... no i think you're mistaken make sure you're doing the competencies to get the crest form signed you should be ready by now if not by this month and you should be ready guys august you should get your crest form august september you should get your crest form signed plus if you're expecting to apply for any of the branches that needs the msra exam start doing it now because for round 1 you you might expect the msra exams to be somewhere in january february first week march something february for instance yeah so if you read start reading now it gives you about 6 months 6 months and that would be a decent time for you to have revised everything for you to get a high score for instance i did apply for a any training i did not get the high score in the msra i did not get into the interviews so msra matters okay so start preparing for it start uh, getting a decent portfolio start gathering evidences everything you do here in the uk needs to be documented in some way or the other so you must have case based discussions you must have mini cakes you should attend few conferences few teachings short courses and what not so for for example do specific courses which would be beneficial for the specialty if you're thinking about emergency medicine do atls do epals do few of the ultrasound courses uh, attend any of the conferences local regional teachings and what not same if you planning for surgical specialties do small courses which are offered by the royal college surgeon suturing course you know trauma course what not um, attend taster sessions you know taster session would always give you marks so that you know you show that your commitment that even if you were not posted in that department you wanted to have a feel of it and you went there and did it so taster sessions are very very helpful especially for the surgical fields do audits participate in audits see you won't be expected to carry a full fledged audit you know design it and carry it forward as a when you are applying for a st1 or ct1 level but at least participation would matter so uh, make sure you 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 doing do like uh, specialty related audits for instance if you if you are planning to apply for radiology okay you've done some audit while you were posted in surgery but try to getting you know a core related one which would have some radiological component to it as well so that would definitely fetch you more marks leadership leadership quality arrange sessions join various health societies you know specialty societies attend their webinars man most of the webinars are free societies yes you can pay about 50 to 100 pounds and you can still be a member sessions as in you know if you can arrange these teaching sessions uh, for f1s f2s your call other junior colleagues nurses paramedics who not but make sure you arrange it and get a feedback for it arranging itself okay you might get some number but getting a feedback for it would be essential for you for getting into the training applications and also for your revalidation every year you get uh, you know sorry uh, you you will have to go through your assessment where someone would see whether you're doing well or not and for that you need this feedbacks you need teaching feedbacks make sure you gather them all and extra curricular activities very important guys people think all i can do is medicine but no here in the uk they think it you know life is larger so for instance i make videos i have got to have some evidence so i can show them oh this is my facebook channel i make videos the same goes with you guys if you love cycling participate in cycling events if you would like to you know do some mountain climbing cooking what not volunteer volunteering is considered very very highly in the uk like you can join the various health watches in your cities what and you know try to give for some first aid it's not a compulsory that you should be related to medicine for instance you're trying to just support the community raise awareness raise funds get them basic you know utilities get them basic sort of edible items and everything start doing something out of your hospital practice 
you know, take some time off from your personal time and do this. It will be rewardful, both in the terms that you get high marks in the interviews and also a self-satisfaction. So guys, I think that would be enough for today. So if, as I say, if you're planning to apply for the training post, this is the time. Start preparing. And if you've got any further queries, just leave me a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Till then, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. You can dream us. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Bye.